Hello everyone, it's lovely to see you, thank you for joining me. Um, amazing how you've all been coming along so much over a whole year, almost a year. How incredible is that? Not, not what we were expecting and um, yeah, it's been, well, it's lovely to share something that I find so comforting and I'm so glad that you're finding origami helpful over this time but I think to do it together is really nice isn't it it can be something that you can do alone but actually together as a group it always feels like we really gather together as a little little group of us so almost to edge us around a table um it's hard to believe many of us have never met before in person hello Amanda um but we are here together and it's as close as any of us can get at the moment isn't it so I'm bringing along um, a fold, which I just think is so beautiful. Hello, Eric. Oh, good. Fingers are active today. I'm very, very glad to hear that, Eric. That's great. Maybe the slightly warmer weather. Is that helping, maybe? Um, it was so cold, and now it's warmed up a bit. It's kind of a bit grey and raining, so you can tell, I think, when it's a bit dark, the lights in the background look more sparkly. So that, that's a good thing, isn't it? Um, so I've brought along a beautiful swirly rose. This isn't something that I knew before. Um, um, uh, origamist, hello Stephen, hello honey. Oh, lovely indeed. And um, I'm imagining you waving now. Uh, yeah, I was taught this uh, rose by an origamist who's an uh, amazing origamist. She's in uh, Turkey and she's a primary school teacher. And she showed us her primary school room. It looks so cool, full of lots of origami. And she uses origami to make teaching really fun. Um, and I always think of Turkey, lots of flowers as well. I used to, as a child, love rose Turkish delight. So it felt very appropriate. She showed us. She wasn't sure who had invented this. Um, an amazing origamist in France. Um, very good at, at recognising designs. I just never have any idea. It's so hard to find out. So this seems to be there seems to be potentially quite a few different people who've who've been doing folds similar, but possibly from Emiko Suzuki. So seems to be where it's come from. Um, it's really lovely. Ah, oh, your classroom is full of origami. Oh, Amanda, I think these have to be the best teachers who involve that. That's wonderful. Hello, Deborah. Hello, Penny. Thank you for joining us. A lovely, lovely regular group. And I know lots of people also join in with these videos afterwards as well. They're all really um, uh, very much uh, thinking of my colleagues at UCH, which is the hospital that I work. <clears throat> and at the moment, obviously, working remote. So it's my efforts to reach out to my colleagues through this, but it's very much for everybody. And it means that we're all here together. We're showing their, showing them support. Um, it's the irony, isn't it? When things are, are really full on, that's when you both, you most need time for well-being. And of course, they, they're not going to have the space and time. But all I can do is kind of keep sharing and keep offering. And I have heard from colleagues who've been enjoying it and using it. And <clears throat> even if it's sometimes just the pictures can just bring a feeling of joy. I really love this rose because actually when Sada showed it to me, uh, folding it's quite it's quite kind of mm, quite kind of geometrical, and then the swirl just changes everything, and it just made me think of spring. So I thought this would be really really lovely to save it to this point. Hello, Wendy, welcome. I thought it'd be really lovely to save it to that point. Um, I don't know about you, but I've been. I think everyone I know is really struggling at this point. I think it's been. It does feel like almost a year of kind of enforced prison. It's not quite, it's not as bad as that, but it's not easy. So I think just, I think everyone's quite fragile at the moment. So we just need to make extra efforts to be extra kind to each other. I guess extra understanding when people are less so as well. I don't know, but um, I think we're all, I think we're all quite vulnerable and hopefully the origami is a nice way of just, just looking after ourselves. Seems like 10 years, gosh. <laughs> it really does feel like a, if I'm thinking last year, <clears throat> I think it was either end of February or start of March and I was taking part in the science festival. We're all touching pencils, colouring in pencils, all packed into a little room and it's just, it's, I can't even imagine that now, can you? I remember I started refusing to shake people's hands, which they thought was very odd and not very friendly, but um, I don't think we should be anymore. Um in an effort to help but uh thank goodness we're okay 
So we just have to be thankful and science will, will, will help. It takes time, but how extraordinary to have, you know, for scientists working so hard across the world to help us. Anyway, I've been nattering enough. I usually chat for five minutes just because it helps. Um, miss the hugs. Mm, big hugs, Eric. Hug a toy, as I know it's not the same, is it? <laughs> it's really not the same. <clears throat> but that's all we can do. Maybe we have to hug ourselves for now. It will get better. <sighs> we have to believe that. It will. Vaccines have been possible. So that, that's the biggest thing. Yeah. Oh, feel more anxious again coming out of Yes. Will we lose everything we've enjoyed? Oh, that, that's good that you've been finding the positives. I reckon... In, in many ways, at least it will mean things like meeting with people or groups can take take place this way. And I think that's a great thing, isn't it? That we don't have to travel all over the place all the time, how tiring that can be. So I, I'm sure that will produce a long term change, which will be a good thing for the environment and good for our well-being. So we have to keep keep hold of the good things. Right. Let's uh, move my laptop over. You can see how dark it is with the sparkly lights. I'm going to grab myself a board, grab something to press on. If you're at a table or maybe you've got a little magazine or a board, we're going to make, we might as well make a nice big rose. Yeah, going back into school, that, that'll be strange, won't it? Well, we're not quite there yet, so I guess maybe enjoy that we are in this time flop. Oh, it's like forever. <laughs> yeah, so... All we can do is value what we have, isn't it? Hmm. So, oh, crimson paper, excellent. I think you can make a red rose for someone. Oh, what a shame we can't get a hug from that. And we're going to take the corner and then line it up. I'm going to do a nice big rose. Um, if it's origami paper, then if you fold it in half in a diagonal with the colour on the outside, I think. I'm afraid I find it quite hard to think about the colour side because I tend to use just copy paper. So I'll get rid of this rectangle. Actually, origami paper is usually softer, isn't it? Which is um, easier on the hands, Eric, I'd imagine. I quite like the, maybe I'm doing workouts on my hands using copy paper. Um, my sharp fold there. And a little tiny nick. So I'm quite excited next week. I've had some requests to do animals. I'm sorry, I'm going to delay it just a little bit longer. You're seeing my my own enthusiasms, which tends to be for the slightly more abstract. Um, I got very excited. I'm making some, I've been helping to make resources for the Royal College of Pathologists about viruses and vaccines. I'm a scientist originally, so that's what really rocks my boat. <clears throat> and I see such similarities with uh, modular origami, shapes the patterns and uh yeah i came across well part of the resources sorry i'm completely distracted now it is chance for a chat isn't it um i came across well this is a drawing um from a detail from scientific paper showing the structure of the virus and it's about the structure of a spike protein the sars cov2 spike protein so looking down on the spike it is this extraordinary perfect equilateral triangle so i got very excited about that it's beautiful and it'll be variations in this shape and this structure that give rise to the variants um so i started just taking this as an excuse to experiment and actually it's been really good for my creativity so this is what i'm going to be encouraging you next week so with an, i'll show you how to fold an equilateral triangle and cut and uh and then i've just been oh this is my latest one i'm suddenly surprised here we go it's become a oh it's become a lovely hexagon i mean it's just so cool yeah so i've been doing lots and lots of different folds so they're i'm making them up and they may well be ones that others have discovered but i'm just making effectively variants uh i think so far i've made up 12 different things i'm see if i can get up to 20 that's my aim and I'm giving people a choice as to which they like that I'll teach three next week. But most of all, I'm going to be calling upon your help, whether you can have a go at discovering your own. Add to the variant and maybe, sorry, completely sidetracked, haven't we? We're making a rose. I've just got excited about the next thing. That's what I'm like a bit. So we did. Oh, thank you, honey. 
Yes, yes, we are making them next week. I'm just too excited not to share it next week. So I've done the diagonal line and then we're going to do the other diagonal line. Yeah, I've absolutely loved playing with that collateral triangle. I think because the options are a little bit more, it feels as if the options are more restricted than a square, where there's almost so many possibilities, it's a bit overwhelming. Whereas with the triangle, I sort of it's, it's liberated me. So I'm hoping it will liberate your creativity as well. Um, so we've done both our diagonal lines. So if you're using coloured paper, which is white on one side, it's the white on the inside here. Turning it over. So if you're using coloured paper, colour on this side. And we're going to do a horizontal and a vertical. Very usual base that we do. That's it. One way. Just enjoy taking your time. Good strong lines, lining everything up. There we go. Yeah, who would have thought the virus that's just causing flipping chaos and horrible, horribleness is actually surprisingly beautiful. But that's what I love about science. Almost if you get close to anything, it turns out it's rather incredible and beautiful. That just helps me anyway. Oh, Fibonacci, yes, that would be good. So as you've got it now, it would form a square. But instead, if you pop your finger underneath the middle and push upwards, it pings up and it makes this nice kind of triangle. How's that work for you? I'll show you one more time. I've been doing lots of things on camera, so my voice goes very easily. But I have to say, I've loved this time of using um, a computer because I don't have to speak up loud. My voice isn't very loud. So for, for big events, I just find it exhausting. So it's much nicer this way. Um, so it would be a square, push in the middle and pop, it forms, just inverts to the other way and push in the sides and you can squash it down and it forms a lovely triangle. That's it. Excellent. So that's working for you. I try and go slowly. I don't want to leave any of us behind and you can always say if you need me to to uh, explain more I think it's like a 15 second delay or something for, between a comment and me saying it but I, I do keep an eye on the comments it's a good system hello Matthew welcome thank you for coming along so far we've we're simply making a base. I'm afraid I don't know the name of this. That's terrible, isn't it? Where I did the diagonals on one side, turned it over, and I did the horizontal and the vertical. Pushed it together to form this shape. Matthew, you'll know this. I'm going to take a corner, and I'm going to bring it up to the top. So this fold, I think, comes from Emma Ko Suzuki, but it's a little bit unclear. There's. I have mostly learnt myself for YouTube videos, which is how I've learnt this. Um, rarely have credits and I really don't think it's deliberate I think it's partly you just don't know where it's come from and so I do my best to try and find out but things also evolve so it's not it's not always very clear the other corner which I think is just a testimony to if something's loved it will get passed on which I think is quite a nice thing I'm going to be sharing a few designs that I've done I'm really hoping they do get passed on that's my aim Anyone can use them and, and it would be lovely if it does happen. That's it. So I'm just bringing up both corners. Um, but for these more mathematical things, I think actually if you spent spent time with it, eventually these patterns would appear. Or may, maybe it's like kind of, you know, monkeys are typewriter, eventually they come up with Shakespeare. Maybe that's not true. I don't know. <laughs> Turn to the back. Um, what a bum base. Thank you. <laughs> I'm terrible. It's because I've never learned from books. It's it's because I've learned from videos, which it, I find diagrams quite difficult. Yeah, corner, bring it up. But it hopefully gives me some empathy with most people, quite frankly, who also struggle and then feel like they can't do origami as a result. Uh, and then this corner, bring it up so it's looking like a, a square, which we've done something similar to make a tulip or... Uh, yeah, a water bomb. Water bomb? Oh, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Which is why it's called a water bomb base. Yeah. Okay. So you've got these. One of these flaps doesn't matter. Which one? 
Are you all with me? So we took those corners, brought them up to the top. I am keen to make sure we just take our time. Yeah, exactly, Stephen. I'm really hoping that the triangles will also give you all a big boost of liberation to just play around. And it's almost like entering a different dimension, <laughs> entering a triangle. And of course, a lot of the modular pieces are very much, the structures are all based around triangles. And again, you see this at, at a at a molecular level too. It's brilliantly mind-boggling and that's exactly what we need when life could otherwise be a little bit mundane. So we've got a little flap. If you pop your finger in and squash it down, line it up and it's like a little square at the bottom there. There we go. That's it, another corner. Excellent. Like so. I don't know why I was sort of thinking the Bake Off tent. I don't know whether you watched Bake Off, but it was so lovely to just see something more normal and to get concerned about beautiful cakes and things. Uh, really lovely, kind of idyllic. It's what the kind of stuff that we're all missing. And then going to the back. Same thing, any of these little flaps. And just nice to see people being able to interact as well with each other. I think we're sort of living a bit through the telly, aren't we? don't know. A little fat there. Whether you've been watching any of my, my partner, we've been watching um kind of really long series, which has been brilliant. So we watched all of Seinfeld. I've never watched Seinfeld. And it was absolutely brilliant. So we're almost watching a few episodes a night. Oh, yeah, the kids, are, the kids Bake Off is particularly good. Uh, but it's almost like you enter another world that becomes your, uh, yeah, your kind of companions for us. It's really lovely. Uh, again, the same thing. You don't watch it, Eric. That's impressive. Wow. <laughs> you must be such a creative person to cope without telly. Yeah. Very good. Actually, in hospital, it's people who probably couldn't afford telly. Oh, fantastic love Seinfeld, who uh, who would often have to get the most creative, actually, because in hospitals, generally hospitals don't buy telly for you. You have to hire it. So it means private companies, ah, alas, can charge what they like because they've got a truly captive audience. Um, so it can be quite expensive. So not everyone, of course, can afford that. So uh, it means people who can't or don't want to, fair enough, um, then have to uh, find their own entertainment which can mean that you'll be more creative as a result. Oh, brilliant, Eric, you're so good. You're, you're brilliant. I admire you greatly. Right, so push down these squares. And our next step is we're going to take the inside flap and we're going to start opening the Bake Off tent and bring it up to the corner. Yeah, I particularly enjoyed the, the children's Bake Off too. We really loved it. Such characters. You know what, I reckon everyone should be allowed to cry <laughs> when they get voted out. As an adult, you're meant to go, oh, it's fine. <laughs> you don't really feel that way, do you? Oh, plus calligraphy. Yeah, you do many things, Eric. That inside flap. And again, bring it up, take your time to the outside. Yeah, actually, what I really liked about the Junior Bake Off, they were really helping each other too. They were really being good friends. That was lovely to see. Even though it was a competition, they were caring for each other. Uh, turning to the back. Again, those little inside flap. Bringing it up and bringing it to the outside there. That's it. Excellent. Yeah, I mean, these days you don't need TV when you've got a computer, do you really? But um, yeah, there's, there gets often less things that you can watch. But uh, I like the option, certainly. BBC is brilliant, so it's, it's nice to pay your, your licence fee because you're supporting good things. That corner, bring it up to the outside. But I admire you, Eric, that you live without one. yeah it's true 
Yeah, you know what? If the internet went down, goodness, how people would have to get creative, wouldn't they? <laughs> but yeah, we wouldn't be able to do this. So I truly did not watch that, and everything would, I think, would collapse if the internet wasn't working properly. Right. So it looks, yeah, it looks like an open tent. <laughs> There's in the wardrobe. Well done, Eric. <laughs> So we're going to leaf through a little page and to the smooth side and do the same at the back. And again, going to leaf through until it's smooth, smooth side. So for me, it's like that on the front and the back. And now, rather than taking a flap from the inside, it's taking a flap from the outside and bringing it up to the top. So we're converting it all to become like a little square with a little bit of intricacy at the bottom. So it's all steps in the journey, isn't it? This corner and bringing it up. Uh, there we go. I hope this will make you feel that spring will come. It's It's got quite a bit warmer, hasn't it? So it actually feels realistic. Whereas it was so cold. I'd go outside and it would be so cold. Then I just want to get warm and fall asleep. Oh, oh that's nice. You, you're seeing all the different coloured pages. Matthew. I guess you're only going to end up seeing one uh, page. Oh, the underneath, actually. You'll see a square of a different colour, won't you? Uh, the outside corner. And um, bring it up to the top. It's an amazing fold. That's it. And then this outside corner. There we go. Lovely. So hopefully it looks like this for you. Uh, is it all coming together? Grab a quick mouthful of coffee. It allows you to also catch up if it's at all always keen to go nice and paced when you get left behind it's no fun is it stop being fun <laughs> okay so i hope that's that's good for you and as we've got it at the moment this will become the nice swirly flower but we're going to do the underneath of the flower great very nearly there uh, and i reckon eric's quite fast so i'll take enough glug of, of coffee I think there's always a 15 second delay. Ah, that's good. <laughs> You've got a drink too. Just coffee for me. <laughs> um, so this very bottom point, thank you, Eric. You, I always feel like you're the gauge on the whole group, even though of course we're all doing it in our own spaces, but we are together. Right, so this bottom corner, faster today, nimble fingers, warmer air maybe. Uh, bottom corner we're going to bring it up and it fits very nicely between these two shapes there like so we've just lifted up one layer of I suppose it is a double layer and then it's like leaves of a book I think it looks a bit like a boat at the moment leaves of a book next page same thing it's that single leaf but it's kind of double Lifting it up and fitting between the gaps there. There we go. That's it. The same thing. Or we can just turn to the back, press a square, lift up that bottom, tuck it in. Like so. And I've just got one more side. I can see that's sticking down. So. Oh. Bottom corner, bringing it up. So we're very close now. We're almost there. So it should look like this kind of a boat. Not really a boat, but it might be. That's it. Right, next step. I'm hoping so. Oh, there we go. So the very bottom of this, just one side, I'm going to lift up. Right. Hello, Anka. Oh, that's okay. Oh, yes. Just join in and watch towards the end. Hope you're okay. 
Ah. So I'm going to lift up this side, and you've already been making gorgeous roses, haven't you? So I'm lifting up the side, and it feels all kind of squashed together, but if you can then squash down those triangles on the inside, uh, like so, then it's going to form a little square, and it is a little bit tough. You've got lots of layers there. But you're squashing it to make a square there. So it was folded down like this, and I lifted up this layer. Uh, as I said, it is a little bit tough. Keep persist; it'll be fine. Pull it up, and you have to really push back those triangles, and it squashes down, and it forms a square. That's going to be the bottom of your rose. Is that a different colour for you, Matthew? I don't know. Oh, fingers. Sorry, it's a bit bit thick, isn't it? There. Oh, oh, welcome, Anchor, to this nice, cosy place. Yes, it's the rose. You, yes. So you've made some beautiful ones, really beautiful ones. You know thoroughly what you're doing. Next week's going to be something a little bit different to I've been having a go at playing and just seeing what emerges, and I'm going to encourage you to do the same. And the strangest thing is I encourage you to join this space as a way of relaxing, you know, away from everything that's happening. Next week's theme actually comes from the virus itself. So it's a beautiful little triangular shape, the end of the spike protein on the virus. So I found inspiration in places you'd never think, but it is beautiful. And I think that admiration of nature is what also brings us hope. Excellent. Right. So this is the bottom of your rose. So maybe have that as that's lying down. Flat, and then the points just bring up so it sticks up. So it's like sticking up like a boat. There we go. So the squares at the bottom. That's it. Have you got it like that? So it's like a little boat. And as you look down, there's four little, four little flaps. Oh, Eric was saying his fingers are more nimble. Sorry, jump in, Eric. <laughs> Uh, so you've got these four little little areas, uh, these lines, and I like to put my fingers between each of those and holding the square against my hand. And then the next bit, I'm afraid it's really difficult to show what to do. One person who I did a live event, which Anka came to, and she was really struggling to do this. And my suggestion was don't even look. <laughs> That that's almost the best thing to do it's almost a feeling and a movement so we're going to add the swirl so i've got the square against my hand i've got my fingers between each of those four things and all i'm going to do is swirl in one direction and just keep moving it round at the center and hopefully <laughs> i know it really is like um Robert Harbin's title, Paper Magic, isn't it? Hopefully, when you keep swirling, a rose will come out. Sorry, it's really hard to show, but it's the base there and just swirling, just keep going. And it's sort of the square will lift and will curve around. Um, and I love how they'll be very varied. So the ones that you do will look different. It's unique looking. At the moment, it's a little bit angular, the end of the petals. So you can sort of curl them back. It really is a wow moment. Is, is this been a new fold for you, Eric? There's quite a lot of sharings of this on the on the internet. It's so beautiful. And I was really glad to learn it from, from a person, from Seda, who is lovely. And she makes little bunches of these roses. Just passing on the joy. So rolling this back can give it a little bit more of a bit more of a curviness to it it's all curvy isn't it amazing that just one swirl just changed it and I love how it just sits in your hand really nicely so it'll be nice as a display that's the way it sits there um, and you could you could obviously add stems to it or you could do a little wreath for them or a little heart shaped arrangement anything you want in your hair <laughs> uh, they're just beautiful different colors um, I think it could be a really nice gift for someone I hope your lovely crimson rose Eric has 
has come together. Has it? Has it? Has it worked for everybody? Have you managed to make your rows? For each of these folds as well, I also do record a film, so you can always go to that as well. Um, so as mentioned, next week's going to be different. Um, I'm a scientist originally, and that for me is where my inspiration comes from. So this is my drawing of a spike protein of the virus. It's beautiful, isn't it? Isn't that a lovely equilateral triangle? So I'm going to encourage equilateral triangle folds and I've shared 10 I've done, one of which I know somebody else has discovered, um, Argentinian um, folder. But I did nine others, which I've shared, and then I've just encouraged people to vote. So these, so out of the 10, these were the most popular. So particularly this one I think was enjoyed most. I think it does come together very nicely. Just the colours that they happen to be, the colours just coincidental. But, um, excellent, making lots of roses. So this will be something different that we'll do and I'll encourage you to also try out your own fold. I was amazed to find I'm making this last night. This is from a triangle. Isn't that great? A lovely piece of jewellery. Yeah, so I hope it's going to really spark your imagination too. I have to say there's something, I've done quite a few projects about creativity and viruses. I know it sounds really bizarre, but uh, there's something about them that's so kind of energetic and I suppose obviously they're disruptive, but they're really beautiful looking things and the structures are quite mathematical. So, but they also are not afraid to change. So maybe we shouldn't over. <laughs> We've had to change, haven't we? So I hope to inspire you with that, science and art. So you know, there's my red and white blood cells in the background. Um, that's generally what I do for my own artwork is about the body. So I hope you have a lovely week. Look after yourselves. Keep safe. Keep up. Uh, yeah, everything you can do. Look after your mind. That's all you can do, isn't it? How you're feeling is so important. And um, I hope this has been fun. It looks like I'm wearing it, doesn't it? <laughs> Look after yourselves, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Penny. Oh, wow. You got some trying your paper. I'll be showing you how to make more. But do experiment with that. That's great. It's not often that you get to use that, is it? Bye-bye. Thank you.